the altar is restricted uh, to clergy and, uh, and to people who have a specific reason to be in the altar in order to effect the divine worship in, in, in as beautiful a fashion as possible. <laughs> ceiling, the angels of God that surround the holy altar. On the right and the left uh, are symbols um, that have relevance to the Holy of Holies in the Old Testament. So here we have the Ark of the Covenant coming into Jerusalem and then on the other side the Ark of the Covenant, covenant being placed into the temple by, by the priests. Above the altar on the wall is the cosmic communion of, uh, of the apostles by Christ. So the distributing of the body of Christ on the left, the distributing of the precious blood of Christ on, on the right. In the semi-dome over the altar is the icon of la titera tomuranon, she who is broader than the heavens. And she's referred to with this title because in her womb she bore God. And it's, it's a poetic description of what took place and the paradox of a child being in Panagia's womb, but that child being the pre-eternal uh, God. She is also there as a prototype of Theosis for us, uh, the first to receive full sanctification and transfiguration in, in Christ. And so she is of central importance there, reminding us that that is the journey that we are on, uh, that that is the goal of our journey, our transfiguration by the grace of Christ into participants, as St. Peter says in his epistle of the divine nature. Now behind the altar on the wall, uh, you will typically have bishops of the church. Of central place is always St. John Chrysostom and St. Basil the Great. They are typically placed in that center position uh, because the liturgy that St. John Chrysostom wrote is the liturgy that we use 90% of the time um, when we serve divine liturgy in the Holy Eucharist. And then the next most common liturgy that, uh, that we use several times a year, the Sundays in Lent, um, on the 1st of January on the Feast of St. Basil, is that of St. Basil the Great from Cappadocia who wrote that liturgy. We've placed St. James, the brother of God, next to St. John Chrysostom because he also has a liturgy attributed to him that is served a couple of times a year. Now, these fathers of the church that were bishops of the church are placed specifically here because they are bishops and the place of a bishop is to encircle the altar of, of God. And it's a wonderful experience uh, for us who are servants at the altar of God, when we stand here to be able to know that together with us are all of these saintly bishops of our church, these holy fathers of our church that are around the altar of God together with us as we serve. On the sides, 
on this side and then on, on the other side over there, we have deacons. So we have over here St. Stephen, the first martyr. And in our case over here, we have St. Romanos, the Melodist, who was another deacon of the church. And they are put to the side because that is the liturgical place of the deacons, that they would be next to their bishops and uh, ministering on either side of, of the bishops. On the altar itself, uh, we typically keep the altar in order to respect its sacredness with very few items upon it. Um, central on the altar is the book of the Gospels, the, the book of the four Gospels from where all of the gospel readings during divine services uh, take place. So central on the altar is the verbal icon of Christ. <laughs> custom for the Eucharist to be served and for the liturgy to be offered over the bones of the martyrs that had died for, for the faith. And from there we have the tradition within the Orthodox Church of waxing in, and in our case because St. George is a consecrate, properly consecrated place of worship, our relics are in the altar itself. So underneath all of this there are waxed uh, relics of saints so that we're always serving the divine Eucharist upon the relics of, of those who have lived holy lives. The Andimension, if your church is not consecrated, meaning that it does not have relics within the altar, the custom would be that there would be relics sewed into the side here of the Andimension. Now, in this case, we don't have um, holy relics in the Andimension because we have them in the altar. <laughs> Oh, 
ευλογούν τε στον κύριο. Υπνούμε την ανάσταση να αυτού στα βρόγκαρη που μήνα στη μα των άλλων πάνω των όλεσαι. This is the cloth upon which the Divine Eucharist is, is, is offered. The chalice and the disc will sit here. Uh, the imagery upon the Andimitsion is the tomb of, of Jesus. Symbols of the four evangelists at the end. The symbol of, of Christ enthroned at, uh, at the top. All of the instruments um, of, of the crucifixion, the sponge, the spear, the grieving angels in awe of Christ who lies in the tomb, the crown of thorns, the nails. The Andimension is signed at the bottom here by the bishop or the archbishop or the metropolitan in whose name the priest is offering the Eucharist. And this is a very uh, important thing to note. In the very earliest tradition of Christianity, only the bishop offered the Eucharist and the presbyters surrounded, surrounded him and then the deacons. As the church grew um, and the congregations grew and this was no longer plausible, the bishops of the church began giving that right of offering the Eucharist to the presbyters. So any presbyter in the church that is offering a Eucharist always offers the Eucharist on behalf and as an extension of the homophorion of his bishop. And so that's why a bishop, your bishop's signature will be on this, this uh, undimension. <laughs> Υμνον άβοντα βόντα και κραγότα και λέγοντα.
right in front of me is the tabernacle. So the tabernacle is the place where the reserved sacrament is kept. And what I mean by reserved sacrament is that on Holy Thursday morning, when we serve the Eucharist and commemorate and celebrate the mystical supper of Jesus with his apostles, we tend to uh, make quite a large amount of host, the holy bread, which is the body of Christ. Uh, we go through a process where we dry it and then we, we put it into the tabernacle so that when we need to commune somebody in hospital that is sick, when we need to visit somebody in prison to give them Holy Communion, when we need to visit somebody who is unable to come to church in their, in, in their home, uh, it's from this reserved sacrament at the tabernacle that we take Holy Communion and then are able to distribute it in, uh, in places and in contexts when people can't come to church. side and the candles again symbols of, uh, of light behind the altar because it is an altar of sacrifice upon the altar it's the sacrifice of Christ on the cross that is prolongated throughout history and made present for all people throughout history and so the crucifixion of Christ is directly behind the altar because the altar itself is an altar of, of, uh, of sacrifice and that sacrifice is the death and resurrection of our Lord and his sharing of his body and blood with us. Over here we have a niche in the wall, it is called the prophecy. Uh, in English, that would translate as the place of the offering, the place of the offering. And this is where the liturgist prepares the gifts for Holy Communion. And so our people will bring bread and wine. And these will be removed. And the bread and the wine will be prepared here and then covered with, with these coverings. And at the appropriate time, they'll then be processed out and brought to the altar in order to be offered on behalf of and with the participation of, of the congregation of, uh, of people in um, offering the divine liturgy. <laughs> Oh, mm -hmm. 
Traditionally, should be uh, this icon called the Extreme Humility. And it is an icon of a vertically standing Christ in the tomb with, again, the instruments of the crucifixion, the spear, the nails, the sponge. But you'll see his eyes are closed because he lies there asleep. Okay? And it's put here because the premise of the entire work of salvation entailed a complete self-emptying of himself. And so that icon goes there because our starting point for our faith is that God loved us so much that he participated in our life as an act of extreme humility, an act of extreme love. And for the priest that prepares the gifts for the Eucharist, this image of Christ in front of you reminds you every single time where it all starts. And that is in the love of God for all of uh, humanity. And that's probably about it. Thank you for your time. I hope you learned something. Thank you. Bless this our God always, now and forever, to us, and to us, Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, have mercy. In the commemoration of our Lord, God, the Savior, Jesus Christ, the commemoration of our Lord, God, the Savior, Jesus Christ, the commemoration of our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ, now and always, and forever and ever, Amen. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, Is his dumb, so he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his generation, sacrificed takes away the sin of the world of life and redemption of the world. One of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear at once there came out blood and water. This is, is the union of your holy things. Holy, highly blessed, and glorious Lady of the Theodox and Virgin Mary, 
at whose intercession the Lord accepts the sacrifice at your holy altar, which is above the heavens. At your right side stood the queen clothed in the embroidered mantle of gold. Saints, the great hierarchy of ecumenical teachers, Basil, the great Gregory theologian, and John Chrysostom, Athanasius and Cyril, John the Merciful, Patriarchs of Alexandria, Nicholas of Myra, Spirit of Timothus, and Nectarius of Pentapolis, and all the holy hierarchs. Of the holy first martyr, the archdeacon Stephen, of the holy glorious and great martyr George Demetrius, the saints Theodore, the holy priest martyrs Polycarp, Paralambus, Lefterius, the holy women martyrs Thecla, Barbara, Anastasia, Catherine, Kiliaki, with the need Marina, Panaskibi, Irene, and all the holy priest martyrs, the victorious martyrs and confessors, of our God, of saintly God-bearing fathers, Anthony the Great, Ephthemios, Savas the saintly, Theodosius the Cenobite, Bonufrius, Athanasius, and Peter the Athenite, and all the saintly fathers, of the holy, glorious wonder workers, laboring without pay, Cosmas and Damien, Cyrus and John, Padalevon and Hemolaus, and all the holy, and mercenary doctors of the holy righteous earth Lord God Job Kim and Anna, the holy master Kiriaki, whose memory on the day of, our, of the holy great martyr George the triumph of patron saint of the church and of all the saints at whose supplication visit us so God granting all our askings for salvation and life everlasting of our father among the saints John Chrysostom Archbishop Constantinople remembering loving master, all orthodox bishops who rightly teach the word of your truth. Our Archbishop and Father Makarios, the Honourable Priesthood, the deacons in Christ, and every priestly and monastic order, our brother and co-celebrants, priests, deacons, and all our brothers who be your compassion, benevolent master, you have called into communion with you. Servants, Christala Pesetera, Alexander, Stephen, Maria, Cassandra, children, grandchildren, Irene, children, husband, your servant Maria, Pandalimonos, and children, and all those who cry out to you in faith. Remember, Lord, your departed servants. Paisios, Stavros, Cassandra, Irene, Christopher, Evgokia, Christopher, Panayotis, Demetrius, George, Stegenos, who was Archbishop, Demetrius the priest, George the priest. Give rest to their souls. Remember, O Lord, your unworthy servant, my unworthy Stavros, the priest, and forgive my errors, both voluntary and voluntary.
We offer you the incense, O Christ God, as an offering of the spiritual fragrance as you receive it and your celestial altar and send to us and return the grace of your Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. And the star came and stood over the place where the child was with Mary his mother. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. The Lord reigns, he has clothed himself in majesty. The Lord has robed and girded himself in strength, for he has made firm the world and it shall not be moved. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. Your glory has covered the heavens and the earth is full of your praise. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. Cover us in the shelter of your wings, drive away from us every warlike foe. Bring peace to our life, Lord, have mercy on us and in your world, and as a good and loving and merciful God and save our souls. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord have mercy. O oh God, our God, who sent the heavenly bread to nourish the whole world, our Lord and God and Saviour Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, and benefactor of blessing and sanctifying us, would you now bless this oblation accepted at your holy altar above the heavens as a good and loving God. Remember those who have offered these gifts, to those for whom they have well offered, and hold us blameless in the performance of your divine mysteries, for blessed and glorified is your most noble and mystic name. Of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always, and forever and ever. Amen. Holy is God, Father eternal, holy mighty, the Son, co eternal, holy immortal, the all Holy Spirit, holy to you, glory to you. Glory to you, O God, and I hope, glory to you, glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I now and ever be to the babies. Amen. May Christ, our true God, who was born in the cave and made in the manger, who rose from the dead, the possession of his most pure and holy mother, of our Father, and the Saint John Christopher, Archbishop of Constantinople. Of the holy, show us him and Anna, and of the holy martyr to give his memory to the race today and of all the saints and merciful to save us as a good and loving and merciful God. To the prayers of the holy fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. 